What's going on, guys? Thank you for tuning in. I'm C. Moody, and this is Living Body Talks. Ministry Podcast. Let's do it. All right, guys, once again, it's C. Moody. Thank you for listening. What I want to start doing with this podcast is having its own version of Bible study. Now, if you have a local church, please continue to go. Please get involved with Bible study. I know for myself personally, I was involved with a church my entire life. But I didn't start going to its Bible study until my mid-20s. I'm only 28, so that should tell you a lot. (laughs) But before I can even start kind of getting into the Bible study or what we what I would try to go across, I want to talk. I want to explain something. Just because you've read the Bible, you know the Bible and you have your favorite scriptures or whatever does not mean that you're living the Bible. (laughs) It seems like ever since I became a minister, people who wouldn't call themselves Christians or are very obviously not living the Christian lifestyle wanted to challenge me. (laughs) They would always ask me about certain stories in the Bible. Do you know this? You remember when this happened? And I'll be totally honest with you. I have not read the Bible in its entirety. And the reason why I'm I'm able to say this confidently is because I'm trying to live this Bible. So I'm trying to understand what Jesus wants me to do and what he has in store for me. And I I still read and I have to admit, I'm getting on myself. I'm bad at it. And I try to read more and I try to expand every day. But I'm not the best at it. But I won't go around trying to read the Bible as fast as I can to say that I've done it. And I can't live by it. That's not why God gave us the Bible. But that was one of the biggest things. As the same thing goes with people who have a favorite scripture. Somebody might have a, a super scripture and then they're still out doing everything else that God tells us he doesn't want to do in this scripture. So I have to let that be known first. But what I want to ask today to you is what is what is your most convicting? I don't want to just leave it as your favorite because that could just mean what you just like to hear because of whatever. But I mean, what's your most convicting? What is your most compelling scripture that you've read in the Bible so far? And hopefully it's a lot of scripture. You know, I don't want you to just have one soul select thing. Like, I hope that, you know, you can look at you in your mind when I ask this question. You're like, oh, my goodness, which one can I say? Like, you have your top whatever it is or your most recent ones, your most convicting ones. And like, which one? has touched me the most. And that might be the best way to say it. Which one of these scriptures have touched you the most? For me, mine is like, it's literally a a chain. It's like a combination. And that just shows for me how the Bible all connects, how it all is tied together so perfectly. The most convicting scripture for me is in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter. I want to say verse... 21, it starts at verse 21, but it says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall make it into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my father, which is in heaven. And this day, many will say unto me, haven't we, you know, prophesied, haven't we done miracles and, you know, proclaim these things in your name? And in return, he'll say, I know you not depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And that blows my mind because for me growing up, Christianity 
was it something you lived by? Christianity was a title that you needed for safety. You know, because I'm a Christian, I declare that I'm saved because I did the baptism ritual that I was good now. You know, there's a, I'm going to make it into heaven now. I'm okay. But I wasn't living that lifestyle. I, I, like, I was baptized at in anywhere between like the ages of 10 or 11. But I didn't start giving my life to Christ until I became like 21, 22. And that was after experiencing some heaviness in life, which we all go through in our own ways. My way isn't worse than yours or isn't easier than yours. But that that convinced it convicted me so much because we live in a world where everybody wants to have the title of being a Christian because it sounds like the right thing to be. You know? Just like the same way we have bandwagoners because we want to go to the thing, the best thing that sounds like it's the most rewarding. Bandwagoners, did I say that right? Anyway, but, you know, we, we want to be that, but we don't even know how to live it. And he says, you know, not everyone who just says my name will make it. And and it makes it even deeper for me when he says that the people who will be arguing, you know, be fighting for trying to justify themselves. Like, haven't we done all these things in your name? Like we've did miracles, prophesied, cast out demons and now if you read a certain, like, there's some scripture where some of the disciples couldn't cast out a certain demon. And God, Jesus says that this will take prayer and fasting. So for even to be able to, to cast out demons, you had to have some kind of connection to be able to pray and fast, you know, to get that kind of authority. And doing miracles, like all these things, are attributes that would sound like if a pastor did them. You would think that these are the most holiest pastors in the world. And Jesus says, not all of them are for me. It's about doing the will. Like he doesn't just leave and say that all these people just say it. Hey, y'all ain't going to get it. Goodbye. Like he says it. Those who do the will of my father. And that's what helped open my mind. And open my soul to him. Is that it's more than just saying it. It's more than just wanting that title. It's more than just having church, wearing church clothes or the best church clothes every Sunday. Having all the crosses and fish symbols and Jesus paintings on my car, in my house, or tattooed on me. Or the jewelry accessories. It didn't matter. All that doesn't matter. All that's going to matter at the end is if you're doing the will of God. And that's just what I wanted to kind of instill for why I feel like God's directed my life into the path of ministry. God's directed my life in the path of being ordained. And I do believe that God is leading me to have a church one day. And that's only if it's in his will. It's only if in his will. So guys, what scripture convicts you or speaks to you as your individual the most? And why? Let me know why. Once again, I'm C. Moody. And this is Living Body Talks, a ministry, a podcast, all together to serve Jesus. I want you to know one thing. I love you. And I don't say that loosely. God tells us we have to love And I'm not big on saying it because it says we have to show it, not say it. But it's in my heart. So, until next time, be easy.